You guys, come on down. Come on down. Come on. Come on down. Have a seat in here. Come on over here, young lady. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, guys. Very nice to meet you, though. Very nice to meet you, though. Very nice to meet you. Nice. See, a lot of people think you have to have a big crowd or something to make a difference. I'm not affirmed to believe in that. Listen, I think you're here for a reason. And when we the information I have to share with you, it's going to change your life. If you do and act, see, success is 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 not that complicated. See, we just kind of make it complicated. And if you there's some universal laws, and as long as you stay close to these universal laws, you guys are going to be good. Because all of you guys, Detroit, there's nobody in Detroit should go to hell. Because everybody I meet going to church. <laughs> That's the most going to church community I ever met in my life. Everybody going to church. Listen, but there's one thing about that. You got to be able to be a debating society. What I say, what the ministers say, what anybody say, you got to debate what they say. I don't care who they are. I'm the so-called leaders, you got to debate them. And you got to debate them between each other. You get 10 times more out of it when you debate them. So it's like playing chess against yourself. So if you sit there, you ain't got nobody to debate with, and you're playing chess, you make a move, and then you run to the other side of the board and say, oh, I know what he was thinking. I'll move this piece. Then you run to the other side and move this piece. See, this thing called life, you got to live it because you can't get out alive. Period. And I told kids earlier today, listen, I ain't new to this. I'm true to this. And when it comes to you and your family, listen, it's like planting a garden. I'm a really good person with plants because I'm from Macomb, Mississippi. That's M, little C, big C, O-M-B. And as you're exiting the road going to Macomb, Mississippi, at the top of this big sign, it says, you're now entering Macomb, Mississippi. And at the bottom of that same sign, it says, you're now leaving Macomb, Mississippi. <laughs> you understand? Our old house had a tin roof on it, and it had holes on it. And when it rained, it just rained right in our house. But we had a solution. We had holes in the floor, so the water just ran right on through. <laughs> And we used to always pray. I used to always pray, God, please get me to California. That was my state. I have seven sisters, just like the movie. Yes, I do have seven sisters. All of my basketball players are, plays are named after my seven sisters. I have seven of these championship rings. My team just have a habit of winning. I am a terrific winner. I'm the only coach in America who's never lost a game. Wow. Never lost a game. The time just runs out on the clock. Yes, sir. <laughs> So we just pick the game up and carry on. Yes. But after I beat you by 40, yeah. I'll come over and shake your hand. Say, yes, ma'am. Oh, listen, I'll schedule you again. No problem. Mm -hmm. But when we come up short, I'm not going to shake your hand. I'll let the assistant coach shake your hand. Yes, <laughs> and we always talk about how important ladies are in our life. I have seven sisters. Everything, every ball I ever caught, anything came from my seven sisters. Period. My basketball plays are named after my seven sisters. So when you come to scout me, you hear me, run Linda, run Diane, run Hattie Jean. The other day I was flying on the plane from Chicago and a little old white lady was on the plane and she was doing like this. She had watched the movie 50 times, she said, and she knew every place. She was repeating the lines to me. And so I said, I got an autograph movie for you, just like I have for you people here today. But I have also something else for you. I love talking about money. Oh, yes, sir. because when I grew up, I didn't have none. You feel me? But see, I was rich in other areas. Our family was rich in other areas. Come on, come on. See, my daddy was a real man. We was the only black family could ride the white bus and nobody ever touched us. Because wow. that man was serious about his and his family. And so that's the way you got to be. See, when you plant your garden, these bugs and snails are going to come. You got to get ready to defend it. And people are always nagging and complaining. Guess what? 90% of the people you meet don't care about your problem. And the other 10 percent is glad it's you and not them. So all this nagging and complaining, you need to stop today because, listen, you will get your future canceled. If you are a chronic complainer, they will cancel your future. You'll cancel it yourself. The young lady earlier was talking about how you think makes the difference. That's right. That's right. How you think. Just your words. Be careful of your words because your words, once you put them in the universe, they are the reflection of you. Period.
See, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And there's a difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is just an economic condition. But being poor is a disabling frame of mind and a depressed of one's condition. In Mississippi, we were just broke. We was never poor. I tell people all the time, our family was so broke when we passed by a bank, it actually set off the alarm. <laughs> we was toe up from the flow up. I had two pair of pants and two shirts. I wore one and we watched the other. And people used to laugh at me all the time. I said, look, that kid wore the same thing every day. Look at it. I was just 40 years earlier. Now they have school uniforms. <laughs> You understand? So it's all in how you look about it. No matter what side of the tracks you come from, no matter how big you are, how small you are, it don't make a difference if you got emotion with your actions. You see me? You see the circles under my eyes? Those from all the fights I didn't win. You made my sister cry, even when my brother-in-law's now. They make my sister cry. I'm coming to see you, partner. Period. And so that's the way life is. I'm going to protect what's mine. And that's what we haven't been doing with our young boys. Now, you guys raise them girls. Be them strong, independent. But they come to them boys. Oh, my God. Coach Carter, I had to rub his legs because his legs were hurting. His legs should hurt after you run 10 miles. That's my goal. And, Coach, that's my baby. Mrs. Anderson, your baby is six foot five, 240 pounds. I don't think he no more baby. After three feet, no more baby. So this is the thing. You guys have to realize this. The money, there's more money than anything else in this in this world. Now, if you don't have your share, it's just your it's your fault. You ain't been around the right people. You understand your homework assignment for me tonight is to go take all the money, all those dead white men's that's own money and write down their names and what denomination of the bill and put it on your wall make a big difference because a lot of people in here spend money every day. And I ask you if who was on a $20 bill, you couldn't tell me. You understand? So you have to do your ABCs. Always be getting cash. <laughs> you understand? So those are your ABCs. And every one of you guys going to get a press, a, a, a printout tonight from me. And this is how much your time is worth. So you can only spend time once. So if you only go fishing once every 10 years and you got 40 years to live, you don't have 40 more years to go fishing. You just have four more times to go fishing. Yes, sir. You understand? You just got four more times. Don't let people steal your, your time. See, if you want to make $100,000, you got to make basically 85 cent every minute. With me in Richmond, California, I start relating our basketball team time to money. I said, young man, if you let someone steal an hour of your time, it just costs you $51. Our kids weren't going to let people steal $51 from them. And you think Detroit school systems are bad? Let me tell you about Richmond Unified School District, where I attend school and where I was a teacher. Believe it or not, 50% of the kids who entered Richmond High School never, ever graduated. And you were 80 times more likely to go to jail in Richmond, California today than you are to go to college. I didn't say eight people. I said 80. Unless you play ball for Coach Carter. Every player who have ever played for me have graduated from high school, and every one of them have gone on to college. I didn't know that until they started researching my life for the movie. I had no idea. That's just what we do. Period. You're talking about excellent. We do it. And guess what? Along the way, we won a few basketball games. But people don't understand, I started coaching the girls' team first. See, ladies have always been real important with me. To make my team, you had to bring a girl in the gym and kiss her in front of me, though you couldn't pick, I wouldn't give you a uniform. And they go, well, coach, I don't have a girlfriend. Go get your cousin. You better go get somebody. Because <laughs> this is the thing. The, the woman going to stabilize it. And you look in our community. Kids born today, 85 of them, 85% of them are born to single black women. You understand? 85%. And so when they talk about church, the church is full of black women, right? And the four men, they want to tell all the women what to do. I don't understand that. You understand? Now, I just have a problem with that. But all I'm saying is this. No matter where you are in your life, you understand? Spring, winter, summer, and fall. No matter how bad it is, if you don't have any money or any resources, 
springtime is going to come. I don't care how bad it is, what your situation is. God, isn't that a great place to put spring right after winter? Isn't he a genius? Isn't that a great place to put spring after you don't have that hard winter? I mean, you've been, you've been on the rope. You're doing that rope of dope. All you guys old enough understand who Muhammad Ali is. You understand? They understand how old he is. You understand? And so therefore, when life come and hit you, you understand? You have to take that punch and you got to keep getting up. And like the young lady said, you got to keep telling what is the five, uh, five, uh, I am's. Yes. I would make it say six, you know, turn it six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, don't limit yourself. You got to think extremely big. A little kid from Macomb, Mississippi. My daddy had a second grade education. My mom had a sixth grade education. All nine of us entered college, attended college because they made it possible for us to do it. That was the mentality. We couldn't afford paper, right? So I learned to write in the sand. People talk about my penmanship all the time. It's amazing. And so you gotta always be polite. People in Hollywood can't even remember our name, but they all said the real polite young man, the real polite young man. So I say, yes, ma'am and no, sir. I have a book called Yes, Ma'am, No, Sir. I'm sorry I didn't bring any. Uh, we had another event and I just, that's by negligence. But I have a book called Yes, Ma'am, No, Sir. And for all you adults tonight, we're going to give you a disc called Think and Grow Rich. I didn't write this book. Napoleon Hill wrote this book. It took him 25 years to write this book. Anybody who have ever accomplished anything in this country have read this book. But I told you like this here. A lot of blacks don't read, so I put it on tape for you. So now if you listen to it. And I guarantee you, if you listen to it five times, it'll double your income. But you got to be diligent. And you got to get it done and stop nagging and complaining. Ain't nobody worried about it. Listen, springtime is coming for you. The other day, a woman came up to me and said, Coach Carter, I really need to harvest. I said, ma'am, you really need to get to planting. <laughs> if you don't plant nothing, how are you going to harvest something? And we always want somebody to hook us up. If I hook you up, you can't stay up. See, if you're behind now, you got to catch up and then you got to keep up. So this is the way God planned it. This is the way things are. You can't complain about everything else. You can't be a cynic about the banks and all the other stuff. You know, it's always good to be conscious, but not self-conscious. You need to look the best you can. Look at this gentleman. Look how he look. You feel me? I wish he was my fullback because he never blocked in high school for me. You, feel me? you got any eligibility left? No. Okay. 53 years old. Okay. Listen. So what I'm telling you guys is this here. No matter what you're going through, springtime is coming. It's put in the right place. And so you just got to hang in there. My daddy used to always say, boy, when you get to the end of your rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. A better day is coming. Come on. And you also always used to tell me, boy, hurry up and take your time. <laughs> you feel me? Didn't understand it at first. And he always said about money, you know, he said a fast penny beats a, fast penny beats a slow dime. Mm. You understand? So all these people always talk about they want money. Now, I'm going to just tell you, I've been rich and I've been poor. Being rich is much better. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it's much better. And see, I just wanted a brand. When you're talking about the movie, yes. that movie is 98.5 correct. I was on the set every single day of shooting that movie. Period. All seven of my sisters, I get put 300 people in the movie. Got 300 people checks, right? 300 people got checks. So every time you see the movie and it stops on somebody, that's somebody in my family or one of my old coaches. Because I didn't want to share my money with none of them. <laughs> I put them on Paramount's payroll. That's what business is about. I got a brand. Just like Coca-Cola got a brand, mention Coach Carter no matter where I am in the world. I got a brand. Firestone, GM, Ford. I'm just like them. So it was about the business. But see, Coach Carter had a little paper before I even got to Hollywood. I owned a whole block. It took me 15 years to do it. Got up every morning at 5 o'clock. And I was in the hood, washed my corner down. And I protected my corner. You came to my corner, I don't care what was going on. Partner, if you do anything here, I got something for you. Guess what? They stayed away from my corner. See, that's the way it is. You got to protect our kids. You got to keep them healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. See, the disparity between what other people make and, and what we actually make is totally different. See, we think we got to make money. See, they earn money. See, the only people who make money in the United States work in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Mint. That was the only people who make money. 
and my cousin Mookie in his garage. <laughs> 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 but the way you're going to earn money is with the ability to think. You got to use this muscle. At one time, I actually thought I was going to make my living from the neck down because I was a tremendous athlete. I wasn't good. I was great at it. But it came from walking with no shoes on in Macomb, Mississippi on them rocks. My first track meet in California, I didn't even wear no track shoes. <laughs> you never had no track shoe. One to hundred year dash. I could flat out fly. But see, this is the thing. I actually thought that that's the only thing I could do. Period. But then I got to introduce mentoring. That's how important things are. See, people are watching you all the time. Kids are one third of our population, but they're 100% of our future. Come on, and I'm counting on all of you guys to help me get my social security check. You understand? Because I done paid a lot into it. Who is this guy called Pfeiffer? I got my first check. Listen, I go, who is this guy who took half of my income? You understand? And people always want to ask me, Coach, you got, you know, because they don't meet people who got movies who just a common guy like me. You can walk up to me in anywhere. I'm still listed in the phone book. People call me at home and they go, I didn't expect you to answer the phone. I said, why did you call? <laughs> the other day I was pumping gas into my truck. I drive a Ford F-150 truck. And I was pumping gas. And the guy, kid, walked up to me and he said, you're a coach Carter. I went, yeah. He said, but you're pumping your own gas. I said, young man, how do you think the gas is going to get out of the pump into the truck? And so people have a different idea of what success is. And people always will ask you, well, how much did you get paid for that? And I'll simply tell you guys this. You know how you endorse a check? And you quite don't have enough money in the bank, but you, you, you kind of write the check anyway because you're going to beat the check to the bank. And you're going down eight mile and the train come across the track. <laughs> Can't make it there. What happens to that check, young lady? It bounces, all right? Well, when Paramount Pictures gave me my check for my life story, I endorsed that check. I did deposit it into the bank, and the bank bounced. You understand? Now, when you make the, bounce, the bank bounce, you done did something special, right? All of you guys can do the same thing. I ain't nobody special. I'm just mean enough to go get mine. But see, you can't fight with your fists all the time. You got to fight intellectually. You feel me? So I'm going to give you some information here to keep you healthy, mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. This young lady was talking about health. I got something here. I plant a garden every year, all year round. I got 10 acres with my school. I have a school in a little town called Marlin, Texas. I don't care what the kid is, I'm going to make him a straight A student. It's only for boys. Next year, you'll see we'll have the highest test scores in the country. We go to school 12 hours a day. We get up at 5 a.m. because that's what time I get up. You understand? And your mom and them called me, guess what, son? That's 10,000 push-ups. And they asked me, is, why do you discipline kids, punish kids like that? It's not a punishment. It is a discipline. Make it plain. Yeah, a discipline will, a punishment will last you one week, one month, one day. You understand? A discipline will last you a lifetime. So how can you let there and tell a man he's going to go be a leader and he can't even clean up his own garage? You feel me? Explain that to me. Come on, I just don't know where it all goes. Well, we want you to run the company. You don't know where it all goes? So you got to be humble and thankful for the little things. That's when God will bless you with all the big stuff. See, if you take care of the little stuff, see, you make your cents have dollars. Or either you can make your dollars have cents. See, I, like I tell people all the time, I don't try to make sense. I'm interested in making dollars. Period. So you guys are here for a reason. I hear there was going to be one great speech given here in Detroit tonight. Aren't you glad you're here? (laughs) So what I want to tell you guys is this. Coaching, you're a coach and you're a teacher. And the reason I have all the championships, other coaches coach their kids basketball. I teach my kids basketball. Totally different. But I started coaching the girls team. Nobody wanted the job. They had won four games in 10 years. I took the job. Never practiced with them because I understood my seven sisters. I just let the girls sit in a circle and talk about the boys and how, how, how was their day. One day before our first game, I had pulled the balls out and we, I showed them how to do a layup. Now, I only like asking men this question because they know a lot about basketball. Young man, how many games do you think we won? First 16 games, how many games do you think we won? No practice, no nothing. How many games do you think we won? 12. How many games do you think we won? 14. 14. How many games do you think we won, young man? 20. 20? We only played 16, so forth. How many games do you think we won? Four. Four. 
How many games do you think we won? Three. I have to say this to you. I have a movie. <laughs> Last time I checked, they don't make no movies about losers. They make movies about winners. Of course we won our first 16 games. But I implemented this great rule. I implemented, if you pass the ball five times, you shoot it no matter where you are. The girls would go one, two, three, four. Oh my God, five. I have the ball. I said, shoot. She threw the ball from almost half court. The ball went in. I was the greatest coach ever. Hold it. Now, with all of that success, we get to the championship. Guess what? My point guard would not pass the ball to my leading scorer. So I called time out, and as the girls were walking over to me, I yelled out, I said, how come you won't pass her the ball? She said, coach, I can't stand her. <laughs> I said, what? Now, remember I'm telling you, all that success, winner going to show up? Mm-hmm. Winner showed up. She said, coach, I can't stand her. But I have seven sisters, so I understand. You know, I said, you know, a woman never catches a cold when she's dressed up. You understand? Shoes can be hurt unless the men get close. But they... <laughs> so you got to understand the psyche. But this is the thing. I called time out, my final time out, and I walked over to two young ladies and I said, young ladies, I said, I'm going to take everybody shopping. Guess what? We won that game by 10 points. <laughs> <laughs> See, you just got to have a little slump buster in life. It can be the smallest of things. And we won the championship. That's the only trophy I have in my house is the trophy I won with the girls because I truly deserve that trophy. I truly, because I found out. And let me tell you a secret about young people. So can I tell them the secret, sir? You, you sure? Let me tell you guys a secret about young people. They will lie to you. <laughs> I go, young man, how is your grades? Coach, I have A's and B's. You check they got C's. Young man, how's your grades? Coach, I have C's and B's. You check A, have them one-legged A's. <laughs> so what I'm telling you, you got to smile. You got to have personality. People do business with people they like. You understand? So the information that was shared with you guys tonight, listen, you got to preach what you practice. See, a lot of people practice what they preach. And you see, what they, you got to practice what you preach. Did I say that right? Preach what you practice. There we go. See, that's why I have great minds around me. You understand? So if I don't get it the right, that's why we are a team. See, now you're, you're attached to a winner. That's what I do. I love winning. I can't stand losing. Oh, I can't stand losing. And people are always nagging and complaining, talking about losing. I said, that's your fault. You want to come up on the short end? You're not dressing the way you want to dress and drive what you want to drive and live what you want to live? Listen, that's your fault. Ain't nobody's fault. Because, listen, you can sit there and complain all you want to. Ain't nobody cares now to the person to the right of you and to the left of you shake their hand and say i validate your ability to be successful do it what is our time what is our time like how much more time i have two minutes okay so now you guys are all validated 